Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you my 5 quick tips for phase 2 in TBC Classic. I'm going to give you some tips that will help you save a lot of gold, save some time, maybe make a little bit of extra gold and obviously get you ready for phase 2 raiding. By the way guys, just before we jump into the video, I've been talking to a few other you know, YouTubers in my field about how the recent drama with Blizzard has affected us. And you may be thinking, oh yeah, I bet every YouTuber's like lost a, a few hundred subscribers. Well, actually, it's much more cataclysmic than that. As you can see here, apparently I've only gained 17 subscribers in a month. And to put that in perspective, I normally gain anywhere between two to 3,000 in a month, maybe even more than that. So, you know, guys, please do me an absolute solid and subscribe to the channel as it does really help out. But don't just subscribe to me because this isn't just happening to me. It's happening to every YouTuber, you know, who makes TBC Classic videos. So, you know, go and subscribe to them as well. But anyway, enough mumbling and moaning. Let's jump into our first tip. So, as you know, in Phase 2, the two new raids are coming out, Tempest Keep and SSC. Okay, and you're probably going to be spending a lot of time there, which means you can finally take advantage of those Tempest Keep and Coilfang Reservoir zone-specific potions, like the bottled Nevergone, and and let's be honest, you've probably just been like deleting them or vendoring them. And you've also got the Canary Salves that you can buy with leftover Coilfang ornaments when you're exalted with the Scenarian Expedition. So when you're doing these dungeons, you know, stop vendoring them, stop deleting them, stock up on these potions, just stockpile them now, you know, while you're probably already farming the rep or the gear, whatever, and because you'll make more use of them when you're actually doing Tempest Keep. What you can actually do right now is buy them up for the auction house for half the price of your typical mana potion. So in that way, you know, you can save a few Wonga or you can make some money by buying those now waiting for phase two to drop and then reselling them because obviously the price is going to bump up. But when it comes to those canary salves, there's like a reputation vendor outside all the coil fang instances. You just spend your coil fang ornaments and you get loads of like mana potions or health potions. Obviously you probably just want health potions because you can just nick a someone's health stone. And there you go. A very cheap way to get loads of mana potions. So as you may know, guild banks are also coming out in phase two. So why not? Prepare now by, on your bank alt, make a guild. You know, sometimes it can be a real pain to get sign-ups for your guild when you're making your own guild. So, you know, do the work now when you've got a little downtime. Get a guild ready for your bank alt. Kick everyone from the guild. And then just wait for phase two to drop. And then go and buy guild bank. Bob's your uncle. For point number three, I want to talk about a specific raid encounter in Tempest Keep called High Astronomer Solarian, if I've pronounced that correctly. Basically, what she does is a truckload of arcane damage and it can affect anybody in the raid and it's probably the only instance where an actual protection potion will come in useful in phase two. But what you can do right now is buy really cheap classic WoW arcane protection potions and to be honest the protection potions for TBC will also be in the auction house but to be in very limited supply but you might want to buy them as well but to be honest it only provides like another 800 protection from arcane damage so if personally I would just buy the really cheap ones from classic wow I think people craft them to like level up their alchemy so that's why there's so many on my auction house anyway on my server so I've just bought a few for when we are doing that fight because I think during progression it will be the play for everyone to pop an arcane potion you know just to be safe and then when you've got the raid on farm then you can use your DPS potions but to be honest I have a funny feeling that you know the phase 2 raiding is just going to be much more difficult than people are anticipating and more and more people are going to want those arcane protection potions and therefore they are going to bump up in price in phase 2 so buy them now while they're cheap my fourth tip is to prepare the materials for your best in slot gear now okay there is actually best in slot crafted gear that will be released in phase 2 that's essentially a pattern that's going to drop from like trash mobs in ssc and tempest keep i'll give you an example so here we have the belt of blasting this is best in slot for a number of casters on the top of my head i know it's best in slot for warlocks and shadow priests and obviously it requires a particular amount of materials it requires primal fire and also some bolts of imbued neverweave now it also requires never vortexes now 
that's basically an item that is going to drop from trash loot when you're doing SSC and Tempest Keep. Let's say for instance you are a tailor and you have all the materials ready to craft this item. Let's be honest, that probably means you're going to get priority on getting the pattern, you know, given to you. It's also important to look at the boots of blasting because it will actually require cloth cooldowns. So before phase two drops, I would recommend stocking up on your cloth cooldowns. You know, it's only four shadow cloth and four spell cloth. Just, you know, leave that, put it in the bank to, you know, for a rainy day and don't sell it and just wait for phase two to drop. And then you can just instantly craft the boots of blasting and the belts of blasting as soon as those patterns drop. And because there's a fairly high chance that these recipes are going to drop in the raid because you are just, you know, killing trash over and over, if you're able to craft these, like, really great crafted pieces very quickly straight off the bat, that's going to be a big early DPS boost and it's going to put you ahead of everyone else. My last tip is don't cut your gems just yet, okay? Or at least, like, hold on to some uncut gems. What inevitably happens when, like, new you know, raid content comes out is people get new gear, which means they need gems again, and we need enchants again, which means they bump up in price. What I'd recommend for you to do is just start hoarding uncut gems a few weeks before we know that phase two is going to drop. So then when phase two drops, you know, you can look at the market prices for every, you know, single different cut gem and then just craft the ones which are the most expensive. Because obviously the prices of certain cut gems are going to be different depending on basically how many melee DPS or caster DPS are getting gear upgrades on your server. I would also recommend honing on to disenchanted loot like your large prismatic shards, your void crystals and everything like that if you, you know, just start stacking it up a couple weeks before phase 2 is going to drop and wait for phase 2 to drop before you sell them because they're inevitably going to go up in price because people need to buy, you know, those gems for enchanting their new gear pieces. So there's going to be a higher demand. And for a while, I think there'll be a shorter supply of void crystals because people will be focusing on doing the new raids rather than doing the old raids and disenchanting loot that they don't need. And my last tip is a bonus one because I'm not 100% sure it's going to work. Perhaps someone from the comment section could help me on this one a little bit. So as you know, when the Midsummer event happened, there was a quest where you can just quickly turn it in and get some free gold when I mean, you run around the map and you get like, you know, a decent amount of gold if you just kept on turning in those quests. From my memory, when you used to play in private servers, you could do this in a Hallow's End event with the candy buckets and you just turn in a quick quest with the candy buckets, you get a bit of candy, but then you also get a little bit of gold. Now from memory, I think it happens in TBC, but I'm not 100% sure. So. Perhaps someone could tell me about that in the comment section. But anyway, the tip is get, you know, some characters. If you already have some characters that are like floating, like between 60 and 70, get them leveled up because you can double the amount of gold that you can make with that gold method. It's a pretty easy gold method that you can do while watching Netflix, right? To get a little bit of extra gold out of the Hallows End event. But there's a chance that everything I've just said in the past minute is utter twaddle because it was introduced in Wrath of Lich King, the, um, the whole thing where you get gold from a candy bucket. So only time will tell with that one. If it turns out we are getting gold, right, I will immediately make a video about it to confirm it. But anyway, my name is Goblin, and to my next video, ciao.